You know, Dexter really has a habit of flying too close to the sun. Hello everyone, Terrence here with Hollywood Already Did It. If you haven't already, go ahead, like, share, subscribe to the channel, ring that bell below. Anytime we have something, you will be among the first to know. Episode 7 of Dexter New Blood is out, called The Skin of Her Teeth, and um, this isn't so much of an intense episode as it is, this is more of a laying the groundwork for the rest of the season. This is very much that episode that is uh, putting a lot of our players and having them show their hand. Like they, all the cards that they were holding close to the vest, they sort of let it out in this episode. So we pick up right at the end of the last episode where she, uh, Angela made the call to Dex to be like, hey, I need you, not Jim, I need Dexter to come. And we pick up here and Dexter's in the caves with her. She's given him about an hour uh, window to examine and look at the body to use his forensic skills that he had with Miami Metro before the rest of the police come to sort of uh, case the scene. Um, and he does. He finds two things that are sort of key to all of this. One, that she was still alive when uh, she was placed there. And two, that she was a fighter and that she bit her uh, assailant in the hand. Uh, we know it's Kurt. Everyone knows it's Kurt, but they're still figuring it out. Um, and that she has a bit of skin from him in his, uh, in his teeth, in her teeth. So that's the title of the episode, Skin of the Teeth. It's 25 years old, though, uh, but they're going to use that to make a match. Uh, and Angela sort of lets Dexter know that she has a suspect. Um, because of the whole caves and not choosing to use the cave and Dexter's like, yeah, that all makes sense. Um, he does not tell her about her cabin yet, but, uh, he's like, yeah, you might be onto something. This could work. Uh, and so, and they already had his DNA on file because they had, uh, he gave it to them willingly during the, the Matt investigation. That's where that ends. We go home. Dex is kind of having a back and forth with Harrison again after breakfast. And, uh, as he leaves, uh, the image of Deb comes and they have a conversation about what to do next with Kurt. So it is clear that Kurt is a, is a serial killer. It is clear that Kurt has sort of has his hooks or is grooming Harrison. And he needs to decide whether or not he's going to kill, put him on the kill table. And what Dexter does is, is kind of, I say a little bit grown up. He's like, I'm going to let the police handle it. Because if he takes, if he kills Kurt and Kurt just disappears while Harrison is sort of looking up to him, that's just another person that Harrison loses in his life. And Harrison's gone through enough loss and pain that you can't just remove him like that. But if you see your hero fall, the going to jail or prison, that might be an easier way to do that. And the back and forth sort of says, all right, for now, I'm gonna, he won't be on my kill table. We'll just have the police do it. Uh, to which Deb sort of replies, like, you're really going to let the police do it? You see, and she, her, her womb starts bleeding. See what police gets you into. Uh, I, I, it's an interesting way to sort of approach things. Um, it's different than what he would normally do. Normally, he's like, I'm going to go kill them. But having the police do their job is an interesting take that we don't normally get from Dex. So, to push them in that direction, he, he uh, gives up then the information about the cabin and Molly uh, not listening to her and going up there and doing her own thing. Um, and he takes her up there. And while there, they see that the entire place has been scrubbed, bleached, everything's been pulled out, it's been stripped to the nines. That entire night, Kurt went to work and got rid of everything. Uh, it does lead you to believe that if he had given that information while at the caves, they may have had a little bit more information, uh, ability to get to that scene before he had his way with it. But that's neither here nor there. Doesn't make good television. To kind of keep putting his foot and going close to the sun, uh, Dexter does go to Kurt's diner and kind of just sits there and wants to have a one-on-one -on -one with him. You know, we've already learned that he doesn't like Harrison working at the diner, but he goes there and he says it's the uh, to represent and celebrate his first day. Harrison's not really buying it, um, but Kurt and him have sort of their, their first tit for tat in this episode. And uh, you start getting some seeds of mono and mono and that each one knows more about the other than they're letting on. Um, but we don't really get that much that far into it because then Angela and Logan show up and arrest him on the spot. And so they take him out for everybody. They're like, what's going on? But you know, he's arrested. Like, oh, don't worry, I'll be back. But uh, they do arrest him and Dexter is just there eating his, his, his cake. Uh, while still staying at work, Harrison, uh, is met by Kurtz. I refer to him as Kurtz Minion because that's sort of what he gets labeled as as it goes along. But he looks like, if I'm correct, he's the same guy that was 
uh, pretending to be Matt in New York or the hotel on the camera. Like, that's who's been using those cards. This seems to be like Kurtz. He gets the, he does the dirty stuff. Uh, and he basically is starting to kind of keep a, keep an eye on Harrison and, 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 and have him do some other job jobs. And he gives him a package to go give to his father, uh, which he does. And Dexter opens it and doesn't quite understand what it is. It's either a, a nail or a screw. That's what it looks like, but it doesn't really have any resonance to him. Uh, and so to find out what it is, because he knows that that's probably coming up, a message being sent from Kurt from behind bars that he can even, he's basically saying that even while I'm in jail or under arrest, I can still get to whatever I want to get to. Uh, Dex takes that as a threat. And so he clears out the, the, uh, the police station to basically have a one-on-one -on -one with him. Um, and he does, he goes and they talk, they have a pretty good tit for chat and Kurt starts to let him know that, Hey, I, titanium doesn't burn and it's his way of sort of saying I know you killed my son and I know you burned him a lot I know you burned him and his body in the incinerator uh, but the screw that he had in his leg that he had at a boating accident didn't burn and so Dex has sort of been revealed to be a killer to Kurt. Uh, he doesn't know the full extent of who Dexter is. Uh, he doesn't know if it's a one-off or any of that, but he does know that you killed my son. The issue is he can't verbalize that because he's already, he can't verbalize that to the police. He can't do anything. They're sort of in a mono mono, but just among the two of them because he's already said that his son's alive. Uh, and the reason why he said it, so they can keep them away from this. So there's, there's bodies, there's levels to this where only the two of them are gonna know that. Uh, I don't think that will really get out to the police like that. It will come out eventually. But for now, the two of them are the ones that know each other's sort of dirt. And uh, it puts them in a precarious situation and sort of lets you know that. It now leads me to believe that Kurt may not, he may only still be one of the women. Because if he's recreating the scene that we get sort of get in a flashback, which I'll talk about in a moment, he's only going after women. He's going after Harrison because at some point he realized that Matt was killed by Jim and because of that he now is like I need to keep an eye on Harrison so so I can kind of repay that favor. Angela's interrogation of Kurt goes to shit uh, it, but it does lead to um, a revelation of a backstory. We sort of learned that he was traumatized as a kid sort of like Harrison sort of like Dexter um, by his father who was drunk and would pick up um, working working women and sort of have, it, have his way with them and beat them and he was, he was aware but he then uses that to sort of blend and mess up the, the, the West the rest of the case and say that his father is the one that killed Iris. Um, even though we, so we as an audience get a, a actual recreation of what really took place and how Iris was sort of the launch pad for the serial killer ways that he's sort of taken. He was already a broken man, but he does the, she, she bites him, she, he runs, she runs and he shoots her in the back. Uh, and that sort of has set up what his killing style is. That was the, 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 the impetus for who he has become. Um, but because the, the DNA was so old and it was only a 63% match, uh, him saying his father sort of leaves that bit of a leeway where they're like, well, we can't really hold them. They don't have any evidence about the, the cabin that, that exists. The only thing they're going off of was just the DNA match. And if that's not there and he doesn't quite know confess, they just have to release him. So they do. Um, in that, Angela goes to pretty much wallow in her misery at the, the diner that uh, Molly and Kurt met up at before. Uh, and Molly meets her there to sort of apologize and kind of just be there and console her friend because she knows she's, she's gone through it. And in that, the two of them start having some discussions about Jim always being around at times that don't make sense. Jim being, having questions about, like, why was he at the diner when I arrested them? Why uh, was he happy? Like, great, thank you. I'm glad you were there. But Molly's like, well, I don't know how he exactly got to follow us because it wasn't like he was listening. And, and Dax just sort of messed up his lie. And he told Angela that uh, he overheard them when she was like, well, that's not possible because we're in the table that he was at and you're over there and you can't hear them. But he recorded it. And they're like, well, then why the hell are you recording? Like, that doesn't make any sense. So it is starting to become more confusing to them as to why he is always around like he's an odd character to just always be in the muck of it 
Angela knows a little bit more that it's Dexter, even though Molly was just like, I, I don't know. He wasn't lied to you, but he has. So there's a little bit of a, a thing. And, and, and we've learned that Angela is a person that once she sort of gets her scent on something, she's not going to let this go. So while she may be also looking into trying to figure out what's going on with Kurt and get Kurt actually arrested, she's going to start looking into the gym a little bit more and she's just try, Dexter a little bit more and just trying to figure out why he is so interested in Kurt. Um, and I think it's going to lead to, obviously, I... We know that uh, with the tit for tat that they keep doing, I believe everything humanly possible that Kurt's going to do, try to do something uh, to Harrison. And that's going to set things off. And then lastly, after being confronted by the boys wrestling team, who was sort of uh, trying to get revenge for their, their player, who Harrison hurt, um, they kind of confront him, and Harrison pulls out that 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 switchblade that he has and starts slicing away until Dexter grabs his hand and those kids uh, run off. And uh, at that point, Harrison sort of just breaks down. Now, mind you, earlier in the episode, he's already sort of been pushed off by Andrea, um, who he's like, hey, let's go out on a date. And Andrea's sort of now freaked out by him because of the the way that he broke the person's arm uh, after they gave up. And so it starts to set him off he's starting to like lose the people that he cares about he's starting to lose that and then he just has a, a breakdown and he tells his dad that he remembers everything i remember being in that pool of blood i remember the trinity Giller touching me on my head you get a little shot of john lickthau saying you know there there your dad will be home soon which is just creepy um but he says that the podcast that he listened to sort of helped put those memories, he's always had these memories and always had these images, but that sort of put everything into perspective and kind of gave it a little bit more of a clearer edge. But he's had these proclivities to do harm, to do, to be angry, to be vengeful, um, and it's always there. And he's like, I'm a freak, and he starts to, he runs off. Uh, Dexter tries a little bit to, not really, quasi try to, like, stop him and bring him, console him, but he doesn't. Uh, again, if Dexter just told him what was actually going on, I think, that he would be in a better place. He would know that he's not that odd of a person. Um, it's interesting to me that Harrison, Harry, uh, taught Dex this stuff and kind of like molded him and, and, and used that vengeance when he was a good person doing that. And then you have somebody who is also broken not doing that for somebody who, who is. It's, it's a different approach to father-son relationship that Harry did not have. And we always say that, and Deb even said at the beginning, it was like, who would do this, teach your kid to be a murderer? But it's clear that there needs to be some type of talking to Harrison and that he's just not doing, that Dexter needs to have some some type of guidance system around him because right now he's, he's falling off the rails. Uh, Dexter attempts to go into his car and in doing so, he is accosted, bagged and tagged, and uh, that is how the episode ends. We hear him trying to breathe him through a bag and kind of fighting, uh, but he is accosted by what we would call Kurt's Mini, uh, and that is how the episode ends. And I definitely feel like because of this, this is a slow burning episode. There's a lot, like I said, a lot of players letting their hands sort of be revealed. Um, that the next episode, especially the way that this ended with Dexter being accosted, I, it's going to be interesting to see where we go from, well, I think we had three episodes left. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see where we go because this thing's going to have to start ramping up. Um, and now that Dex and, and and Kurt are aware of each other, it's going to be a more of a, uh, a road to the finish of who gets there first. And the prize in this is Harrison. And it's going to be interesting because Harrison is also broken how quickly we get there and how much damage sort of collaterally happens uh, with Angela and Andrea all on the board as well. Molly, Molly too, because Kurt still seems to have his eye on her um, because he, I, I believe he's going to go after Molly more so because she has sort of stopped the, um, the, the method or the mode of the cabin that he has. She's sort of put an end to that. So now he's like, I got to focus it differently. Uh, I am curious though, and I don't, I don't know, it is going to be interesting to see what happened first or when when was the clue for Kurt that, that Jim was not on the up and up. Like, I know you said that night with the ash, like it wasn't ash, it was snow um, on the drive that he drove him back home. That's part of it. But I feel like because Jim just kept popping up everywhere, it made him a little bit more like, I need to figure out what this is. And I'm, I'm trying to think if the Harrison becoming close stuff is the signal when he started realizing that it's because I don't think he really cares about 
boy, I know before I said that I, I it's clear that it's not it's just a sexual thing, and that's why I think with him flashing back to him seeing what his father did to to women, he's not sexually attracted to women, but I think he still wants it to be girls. There, there never has been a boy, to the best of my knowledge, that has been in this. So I don't think the Harrison stuff fits his mode of operata, apparatus. I think he's just keeping an eye on him and keeping him close. Strictly to get a gym. Uh, a really good episode. And not my favorite, but it, I, it does serve the, serve the purpose. And it does sort of put everything on the table so that we can get these last few episodes uh, off to the races. But as the episode, Skin Over Teeth, what did you guys think about the latest episode of Dexter? Leave your thoughts and comments in the comments below. If you haven't already, you can follow us on Twitter at Hollywood ADI, or you can hit us up on email at HollywoodAlreadyDidIt at gmail.com. And we also have a podcast with the same name that's on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, any other place podcasts, we're there. Current episode is all about uh, Spider-Man No Way Home, uh, and there are spoilers. So if you haven't seen it yet, don't watch it that. But like always, I got my ticket. You got yours. Thank you.